Hey everybody, this is Phil Holoka from Complete Captive Management Services. Today wraps up our last three-part series on the Bordero Report. And today's conversation is, how do you measure the value? Well, really the only way to measure the value of one Bordero is to see multiple. Therefore, if you're considering investing in a group captive, you really should look at each one of those Bordero reports before you invest. Okay, so the duty, the sole reason for the Bordero report is to allow the group captive an understanding of the premiums collected. So in this example, $100 is collected from all of the insureds within the group captive. And then there's stuff taken out, and that stuff is here. That then leaves the working layer, and the working layer is used to pay claims. Okay, so the excess coverage, you've got to ask three questions. Who is it? What is the percentage of the premium? And what is the retention level? So once you've identified, you've answered these questions, you've got to get a bit granular on a few other things. You've got to ask yourself, is the excess carrier the same as the fronting carrier? 99 out of 100 times, that's going to be the case because the fronting carrier wants the excess coverage also for a few reasons. Number one, operational efficiency. The fronting carrier, which is an admitted insurance company, is unlikely to be willing to pay a premium effectively to a competition, to the, a, a competing insurance company. So that's probably going to be a deal breaker if your captive wants to outsource the excess layer to another carrier. Excess coverage is also very profitable. So if the fronting carrier has a 100% quota share and they're not taking any part of the risk, they're especially going to want a piece of that excess layer because they can generate profits, they can generate underwriting profits from that excess layer, which is what they want. And then lastly, you have to ask, is there a commission built into that premium? So if the premium is $20, is there 10, 15% commission being paid to the captive promoter, the captive manager? You should just ask the question, okay? And as you know, with any insurance, when the retention levels go up, the premiums go down. So how do you measure that value? Well, you can't unless you see multiple captive border rows. So if Captive 1 has a $250,000 floating layer, and Captive 2 has a $300,000 $300, floating layer, you would hope Captive 2 has a lower percentage of the premium than Captive number 1. Okay? Administration fees, fronting fee, underwriting fee, however it's labeled on the border row, it could be multiple, but it's a operational expense. So fronting and state premium tax are collected. Let's call that $13, 13%. Now, quota share. 100% quota share means the captive is not sharing any risk at the working layer with the fronting carrier. The captive is effectively just renting their paper. When it's 100% quota share, this number is going to be high because the fronting carrier is sacrificing its underwriting profits and replacing those profits with a fronting fee. Now, if your captive is 90-10, 80-20, 60-40 quota share, they take this number, the 20 or the 40, that is an additional profit opportunity for the fronting carrier. Therefore, this fronting fee will be lower. Okay, so the higher this number, the lower the fronting fee because there's profit taking at the 20 or 40% level. Okay, 
Now, in a quota share arrangement, so either one of these, the fronting carrier is going to charge the captive for that. They're either going to take a percentage of their share, which is generally the number down here, the $67, or they're going to charge a premium for that. So in a 60-40 quota share, the captive may charge 35% for a 40% quota share, or they may charge 45% of a 40% quota share. That is dependent on the group, the, the individual insured, the risk profile, the location, lots of things that drive that, that number. Okay. So if the fronting carrier takes a percentage of their premium as their acceptance of that risk, it comes out here. So $100 minus $33 equals $67. If it's a 60-40 quota share, you're going to give the fronting carrier $26.80. The captive's going to keep $40.20 to pay for 60% of the claims that come in. Okay, so let's assume for a minute that this $67 really represents a million dollars of collected premium from all of the insureds. And there are $900,000 of losses. That means the front's gonna pay 360,000, the captive's gonna pay 540,000, leaving $100,000 of captive underwriting profits. Is this good or bad? Well, we don't know because you need to compare and contrast. I can tell you that if this was a negative number, that's bad, but how good 100,000 is, you don't know until you compare and contrast. The one thing that I do know is you shouldn't join a group captive if that number is negative. So, I hope this helped. We may come out with a bonus edition of the Border Road because it's such an important topic. But until then, next week we're going to get into the fronting carrier. Talk to you later. Bye bye.